Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we are going to conduct lecture number 11 of our online course which is microprocessor systems and interfacing and today's topic is unconditional branch. So first of all we will discuss what is unconditional branch and why these conditions are important for our uh, programming uh, in programming a microcontroller. Okay, let's discuss what is a branch instruction or branch instructions, right? So branch instructions are those instructions which disturbs the normal flow of program. So first of all, we need to understand what is normal flow of program. And at this stage of our course, we can easily learn it because we have covered some important topic about it, right? So let's say our program is consist of 100 lines, one, two, three, four, five, and this thing continues up to 100 lines or I can say 100 set of instructions. That is why it is basically 100 lines. So we know that program will be flowing or program will be executing instruction by instruction. So first of all, instruction one will get execute and then we will proceed on instruction two. One thing more we have also discovered uh, in last lecture that there is one important register which is called program counter. So program counter, what it does, it actually keeps a track of the program so that it can guide the flow of program. So program counter will be pointing instruction two while instruction one is under execution. And when this instruction one and uh, execution uh, finished, what will happen in instruction two will start to be execution, uh, executing and this program counter will increment itself for next instruction, which is instruction number three. And this uh, process will continue up to one will arrive or micro, uh, micro uh, processors will arrive at instruction 100, right? So this is the normal flow or sequential flow of program. But instruc branch instructions are those instructions which actually disturbs this normal flow. What will happen? It might happen that after uh, line number five, uh, it will realize, okay, this is a branch instruction and it will force the microcontroller or program counter to jump to line number, let's say 55, somewhere here, right? So uh, it will skip number of instructions, right? So this is the reason uh, they are called branch instruction because they are branching from uh, current instruction to very far away instruction in the program or in the piece of code. So that is why these instructions are known as branch instruction. And that, that's, that is the reason they also known as disturb the normal flow of program. Okay, let's discuss types of instruction. There are two types of branch instructions. Uh, one is called unconditional branching. Uh, another one is called conditional branches. So in this lecture, we will be focusing only on Condition, uh, unconditional branches, uh, conditional branches we will cover in this course later on. But in this lecture specifically, this is designed for unconditional branches. So what are unconditional branches? Unconditional branches, whenever they occur in the code, you have to jump it anyway, right? For example, if line number four is unconditional branch, it will, and it uh, it forces a microcontroller or P program counter to jump to line number 55, you have to jump. There will be no compromise on this jumping right or on this branching but if the line number four is conditional branch then there will be certain condition which will be checked by microcomputer or microprocessor and if that specific uh, condition is true then branching will be happening otherwise branching will ignore and program flow will continue in sequential, sequential uh, fashion so th these are the two types but in this lecture we will cover only unconditional branches so unconditional branches, in unconditional branches, again, there are two type of unconditional branch, right, which are available in big microcontroller since we are focusing on big microcontroller. So one is called short branch and short branch, the branch statement would be branch, right? So this is our important statement for short branch. Why it is called short branch? Because it consists of two bytes. The size of instruction, we have already learned it that uh, big microcontroller follow the risk architecture, uh, which uh, uh, which avoids the variable size of instruction. That is why uh, short branch is designed 
or a short branch instruction is designed to make it the same size of other instructions. We know that most of the instruction, even 97% of instruction used in PIC microcontroller are based upon two bytes, right? So that is why short branch instruction is also following two bytes, but this two bytes let him uh, allow to jump within the limited range of the code, right? You cannot jump to the end to the up to the end of the code and these things we will uh, these technical terms we will learn uh, in coming lectures when we will focus on the program memory how long we can jump and how long how far we can jump so branch uh, instruction is a short branch because it has jumping capability and it jumps unconditionally there will be no condition to check at all but it will jump within the short range and what is that short range we will define those terms in later lectures but uh, so far, we know that branch uh, instruction is a short branch instruction and it is consists of two bytes only because it uh, meets the criteria of risk architecture. And then we come to long branch. Long branch uh, is basically, uh, again, an unconditional branch and it, it's a statement or a keyword is go to. Uh, and we will see it very infrequently. We won't use it because we will be writing in this course a uh, very small number of uh, instructions code, right? So that is why we will not focus on go to command. Rather, we will be focusing on branch command in this course. But go to command is a long branch and it is basically four bytes. As I told you, 90% of the instructions were composition of four bytes, but there are some instruction and one of them is basically go to, which is not following the fixed size. It is basically four bytes instruction. So that means it is not, it will take more time to get executed. That is why we will also avoid go to com command, right? Okay, let's do some example for unconditional branch instruction and we will be focusing on short branch. Okay, in this example, we are going to take the same example that we learned in the last lecture in which we connected an LED with port B. So uh, one can see that this is LED and this is connected to port B and port B's pin number one. We know that port B's consist of eight bits starting from zero to seven. So it is connected to pin bit number one or RB1. So we will be uh, writing a code to turn on the LED that we wrote in the last lecture as well, but this time we will also turn it off, right? So let's start our code. First of all, we will write ORG to uh, zero X, zero X to A. I hope you know that because we are defining the beginning of the code. That is why we are writing this assembler directive. And then we will uh, make this port, we will make this port port B as uh, uh, output port. So to, to declare this port B as an output port, we need to send 00, zero uh, to the every individual bit of uh, TRIS B register, which is the corresponding or associated register of port B. So what we will do, we will write binary data, 8 bit, move little to working binary in 00, zero, 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 uh, zero. So 8 bits, right? These are 8 bits and these are stored in working register with this instruction. So eight zeros or zero zero hacks will be stored in working register. The next instruction we will be using is, uh, we will send this information to press B register, move working file, press B, right? So uh, due to these instructions, what we are doing, we are actually making our, uh, making our uh, port B as an output port. So this is the piece of the code. Okay, let me select it. And why for what purpose it is written? Let me write it to make port B output port, right? I hope you know that, right? So we are just declaring port B as output port in this in this piece of code, right? Let's uh, resume our code. And now we will be focusing on uh, to send one on this LED because if we send one over here, right, what will happen? Let me show you in the uh, diagram. If this pin will send one over here, so the positive terminal will get one and over here it is zero uh, with, because it is connected to ground. So what will happen? It, this actually, this LED will become forward bias and LED will turn on. So to send one over here, we have to send one at port B uh, RB1 position of port B. So how we can do it? We will write our code, move working file, sorry, move literal to working, this time binary information, four zeros to the most significant bit, then two zeros and then one zero. So this is the information that we have to send to 
port B and we will be turning on the LED. Move working file binary and what file we are going to move it. We are going to move working register into port B. So this LED will turn on because this is now forward BIOS. And remember, I told you not only we will turn it on, but we will also, uh, 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 what should I say, turn it off as, as well. So we will turn it off using the same commands, but this time we will send zero uh, to port B. So eight zeros will be used here, right? And we will send these information to move working file port B. That means the same information, uh, the, these two lines, okay, let me highlight it for you. Uh, let me, okay. They are here. They are here. So this piece of code is written to turn on the LED and then this piece of code is written to turn off the LED. I can also write it for you just to remember it. This is to turn off, turn on. And this is for turn off, turning off purpose, right? So we know that we are going to turn it on, turn it off. Now we have done it and we want to repeat this procedure. So we will be accomplish this task using the branch condition or the short branch condition, which is BRA or branch, right? And we will jumping it to backward because we want to repeat this procedure. So let's say we define a branch, a label. A label could be anything that you can define uh, in alphabetical order. So for example, I want to say branch repeat. Repeat is just English alphabet or English word, which you can use. So I can use ABC, XYZ, whatever you want. So I, I'm writing repeat. And then I can just simply say that over here, repeat. Right, so what will happen? Uh, branch will force, branch condition will force this code to be repeat to this point and then this procedure will repeat and then this procedure will repeat and branch will again repeat it. So this uh, will be an infinite loop and it is an important example of embedded system because now microcontroller pick 18 f 452 is serving as uh, uh, embedded system which will run for infinitive number infinitive time and it will be performing a same example or same application because this application turns on this LED and then turn off this LED. So this uh, mechanism will continue for infinitive number of time and this is an important example of uh, embedded system, right? And we are achieving it using short branch which is BRA and by using the label repeat and repeat we are using the over here, right? Remember, I did not use uh, repeat label before this code. Why? Because this code is written just to make the port uh, P as an output port, which can be done only once, but turning on and turning off, this is the two important part of, these are two important part of a program, which we want to be repeated. That is why we are actually uh, using repeat uh, uh, label over here, right? One thing is missing in this code, uh, just to terminate the code, we will actually writing here and, right? So now ORG 0X2A, is a, it is an assembler directive, and and is assembler directive and both are directing assembler that okay from this point you will start your code and this point for code will be finished you don't need to go for further because and is used here i hope you have understand the concept of short branch and unconditional branches if you have any question you can ask and post in comment section Thank you so much for listening.